everyone, it's Joe Carroll. Excited to be here with you guys today. So what I want to talk about today is recently we did a video where we showed some full band mixes for Michael Humphreys, uh, which was it's kind of a groove fusion uh, based jazz that was really cool. We had drums, bass, electric, uh, and keyboards and some extra keyboard passes. So still just a handful of instruments, but nonetheless a, a full busy track. As part of that same package, when they sent them to me to mix, I got uh, two tracks that were nothing but guitar and uh, synth. Warren said, hey, we would love to have you talk about what you did on the mix. And my first instinct was, but it's just two instruments. That would seem boring. And he was like, no, that that's actually perfect because sometimes that's what the guys receive. So by gosh, that's what we're going to do. This is a little more traditional sounding in some ways uh, than the other package, if you've watched that video. But one thing that's really consistent across the board in jazz music when I get it from the groove-based jazz all the way to the more traditional stuff is that the electric guitar tones are very fat. They're very round, very warm. Uh, I mean, inherently, from guitarist to guitarist, whether it was cut in New York, L.A., you name it, that's what I get. And so a lot of times we have we have to carve. We, we want to keep that. We want to honor that intention because that's the sound of the genre. But at the same time, we have to carve something away to get it to fit and, and sound a little more distinct, right? And on this particular song, uh, I chose the amp. Uh, it says uh, Lewitt, so I guess they used a, a Lewitt microphone uh, to capture it. But it's this green track here. On, on the other package, I don't know if I mentioned this during that video, but I used uh, Eric and, and uh, Warren tracked a DI as well out of his pedal board. So it wasn't a, a, you know, a raw DI. It was very f full sounding with all of his effects. And I thought that fit the groove-based performances better because it was a little leaner and the uh, the effects were a little more pronounced. But on this song, the amp just seemed to work. And, and let me, I'm going to bypass what I did, and I'm going to let you hear the amp raw, and you'll get an idea of what to expect when you get a track like this in the jazz world. <laughs> is extremely stereotypical of what you will get. Okay, which which is cool on its own, but the thing is we're often trying to combine it with, you know, drum kit, bass guitar, piano, various things. So we have to thin it out a little bit. Now, in this, uh, we're also competing with the low frequencies of a synth pad. So we definitely have to lean him out. All right, so what did I do? First of all, we had Phoenix, which you're like, well, that's tape compression. Wouldn't that be taking away from you know the point of, of trying to get it to pop out? Yes, except for the fact that this setting right here, Sapphire, it's like a tape machine that's biased towards the high frequency. So it actually adds some zing that I like. And I'm, you can see I'm using very, very little compression. I'm mostly just wanting that tiny bit of a frequency bump. My next tool in line is the MC2000. Uh, and this is the three band, MC303. And this is where it starts getting interesting as far as, you know, trying to cut away the low mids or control the buildup of the low mids. If you do it with the EQ alone, you're taking it away from times when he's up 
in the upper register and you want that low end body to stay there. And this is jazz. Sometimes that's what they're going to do. There's going to be a lot of notes. So you only want it to, to be cutting the lows when the lows are excessive. And that's what the multiband allows me to do. So let's take a look here. You can see I've got my crossover set just above 200. So it's just really, you know, by time that crossover takes effect, we're really looking more like a, oh gosh, you know, 180 cycles, 175 cycles is where it's doing its damage. Here it goes. Let's do before and after, okay? I'll unbypass it along the way. So a couple dB of audible reduction of the low end, you know, controlling it just a touch, just a touch. And again, remember, now when he gets up higher, uh, that couple dB of warmth will be there. Except for the fact that that's followed with some EQ. And because it still needs quite a bit of EQ to compete with the other tracks that's going on. Because in one of them, you know, at times some pretty attacky uh, synth, synth sound. And in one of them, I have a bright piano. Okay, so that guitar is going to have to compete. So which means it's, it's, it's just got to be thinned out. So let's take a look at what we did here. And you'll see these numbers and you're like, wow, that seems really, really extreme. Except for the fact that SSL, their earliest versions of, of EQ, like the, the 4KB, the 4KE, especially the B, when you see you know a lot of gain at 8K, it's not as much as you think. They were kind of a soft sounding circuit. So if you push that much on, an, on a knee, for example, uh, you could make your ear bleed. But on an SSL, you can get pretty radical uh, at times, and it's not as much as you think. So let me do a little bit of a before and after, okay? And this is where we really start making a difference. Okay, so it still sounds like a jazz guitar. It still has that round, warm effect, even though now its notes can be heard with the piano, okay? And now I'll solo up the guitar and show you uh, kind of the same thing. Okay, a good, round, non-harsh sounding uh, top end um, EQ is a good choice on jazz dates. Uh, like this. Okay, one other thing, and this was something I carried over from the full band mixes. It just sounded better to me when I had just a tiny, tiny fraction of stereo width added to the guitar. I mean, it's minor, very minor, but nonetheless, it sounded better, so I left it. Here we go. Very, very minor, yes, but I like it, all right? So hopefully Michael Humphreys and his fellas do as well. Okay, so that's the sound of the, the guitar. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about, though, that I thought was kind of cool on this mix, and this is something every once in a while you get songs in, and whether it's the vocal group, uh, keyboards, orchestra, whatever, even after you've been carving and carving, you know, there's just a little buildup at times in the in the low mids, or it can even be in, in the upper mids. Maybe it's building up harsh. And a really cool tool is Gullfoss here. You see this red line. Let's see, I've got it set to 130 cycles. And this one is about 600 cycles. Okay, so I'll try to remember that. Okay, so this is the way it comes when you first launch it. But you can take these and you can tell it what not to affect. So I don't want to affect anything under 130 nor do I want to affect anything above about 600, nor. That's a fancy word. I don't know that I've ever used that before. Depending on what you're trying to accomplish, in this case, I'm trying to reduce a little of that buildup. The intelligent EQ that's going on behind the scenes of this plugin will kind of act in real time quickly, kind of make it gel a little bit better in, in that range. Right? So those couple octaves right there are going to sound better because it's saying, hey, 324 cycles is built up just a little bit right now, but now it's not, and it'll let go. It's it, what, it, Just watch this in real time, and that's the tame button here, and I'm using it lightly. Uh, I think Gullfoss is something to use in very minimal settings. Uh, you know, the tame, I've never had it before uh, above about 18, and a lot of times it's more like 10, so it's just barely, barely doing anything, but it's nonetheless better for it. So here it is in action. So 
episode before and after. So that thing that the low guitar, you know, the low end of the guitar is doing is a little under control. So this is a really cool plugin when used um, just just in moderation. It's just extremely handy, and I use it from time to time on uh, orchestras when they get really big and warm. Like I mentioned, uh, vocals sometimes you get. Uh, you know, a, a lot of vocal layers and maybe the low mids build up in the choruses. So I'll automate it to just come in on the cho choruses or the bridge where there's a bunch of vocals in just one or two octaves. So it's a really cool tool, but that's kind of um, a little look at what I had going on here on this two track Michael Humphrey's jazz piece. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And remember, download these multi tracks, have fun with it, enjoy, and happy mixing, guys. One, two, one, two, three.